Here's a little red oak seedling growing in the understory at Bear Island. I've become a little bit obsessed with red oak, mostly because 30 years ago loggers came and cut all the big red oaks and it's become sort of my life's mission to restore this species to this forest. Oaks are an amazing species, really important for wildlife. They're known to harbor really dense and diverse populations of invertebrates, many more species at a much higher density than any of the other forest trees in this area. They also produce acorns, which are a really important fall food source for lots of wildlife from turkeys to bear to deer to squirrels. Every two to three years, all the oaks over the entire region will produce a huge crop of acorns at once. This is thought to be a form of predator satiation. The populations of squirrels and other rodents are known to be very closely associated with these acorn years. So the populations go way up in the aftermath of a year when there's a lot of acorns. So if the oaks were to produce lots of acorns every year, the populations of those animals would rise and they would eat all those acorns and none of them would get to become oak trees. What they do instead is to starve all those creatures for a couple years and then to produce a bumper crop all at once. It takes two years for an oak tree to produce an acorn and a mature red oak can produce tens of thousands of acorns at once. Now, even with that, it is very unlikely that any of those acorns get to sprout. In the two years that it takes an oak tree to produce an acorn, 50 to 90% of them will be parasitized, especially by this insect called the acorn weevil, before they even get a chance to mature. Of the acorns that are actually able to mature, that escape that parasitization, it's common for all the acorns that are left on the surface of the soil to be consumed by bear and deer and turkey and all these other critters that like to eat them. And we think that in many cases, the only acorns that survive and that actually have the chance to sprout are those that are cached by rodents. The animals that cache acorns, blue jays do it, but especially squirrels, mice, and voles do it. We used to think that these squirrels and these other rodents would forget the locations of some of the places where they cached acorns and some of those acorns would get a chance to sprout. And now we actually know that squirrels especially have excellent spatial memory and that it's more likely that the acorns that get to sprout are from squirrels that have been killed by predators. The other wrinkle in this whole scenario is that not all squirrels, mice, or voles cache acorns in the same way. Within the populations of these different species, some individual animals, some individual squirrels, mice, or voles will cache acorns in ways and in places where they may sprout. Others will cache acorns in ways and in places where they will not sprout. There is variation between the behavior of individual animals within each species. We call this animal personality or intraspecific behavioral plasticity. And so in summary, for this seedling to exist, it needs to have survived two years of parasitization on the tree, to have been lucky enough to be cached by a rodent and specifically by a rodent that happens to have behavioral traits like caching it shallow enough that it will be able to sprout and not destroying it as it caches it. And it needs to have that rodent killed by a predator. I wish I could tell you that once an oak tree sprouts from an acorn, that all of its trials and tribulations are over, but they're really just beginning. Oak seedlings don't just shoot right up into the air. What they do is they feed off that acorn and invest in a long root system. If you see a little oak seedling like this, it might have a root that's two to three feet long that it's been growing for several years as it's been feeding off that acorn and establishing itself in the understory. Their strategy is to establish that root system and then wait for a disturbance to occur. When the tree that's overtopping them dies, falls over, when something happens to create a little bit of light to hit the forest floor, that oak will be able to shoot up with the resources from that root system. They can wait as a seedling like this for 20 years, during which time they're pretty vulnerable to stuff like deer browse. Even when they've had the chance to establish themselves and a tree that's overtopping them dies, they still have to race against hundreds or thousands of other seedlings that are competing for that same little patch of light, that same little chance to reach the forest canopy. It should be impossible, but somehow it's not. And we know that every oak tree we have went on this same seemingly impossible journey and survived. It's important that we remind ourselves that every one of these little trees is a miracle. Something that's important to remember is that oak trees don't have to do all this alone. I encourage oak by thinning around the crowns of each of my oaks that are still here, giving them more room to grow, making it so that they can expand their crowns, which will ultimately lead to them producing more acorns. When I manage my forest, I leave trees and treetops jumbled on the ground to protect those little seedlings from deer browse. And then as they grow up, I cut the other trees that are competing with them, giving them a better chance to eventually reach the canopy and restore those oaks that were lost when this forest was cut 30 years ago. And as a result of the work that I do, there will be oak here for future generations.